A moment of significant change or a turning point, altering your course, is known as an inflection point. In business, these moments have a significant impact in many ways. That's why we're speaking with leaders from across the asset management industry to hear the stories of their inflection points and the impact they've had on their journeys. Join me and my colleague Mark Spina as we explore the business of being in business with insights that can help you wherever you may find yourself. This is Inflection Points. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Spina, President and COO here at Flex Networks. I'm also co-host of Inflection Point. Uh, today, I'm joined by uh, a, a relatively new and fast friend in Darren Sidabaka. Uh, Darren is president of DCB Strategies. He's a self-described, and, and I agree with this, uh, one-of-a-kind uh, professional coach and uh, has a consultative platform that focuses on the financial space. He has, uh, I think, on look, Darren, four decades of professional experience. Yep, right up on that. That's perfect. Decades of, uh, and uh, what, what's interesting is that experience ranges from high performing individual contributor to national sales manager to a few things in between. And uh, along the way, has found time to do some groundbreaking work in the foundation right. space um, as the co founder of the One Hit Away Foundation. Um, and finally, at least for the intro, uh, Darren hosts his own podcast, uh, Decide, Commit, Become. And um, I've had the pleasure of getting to know Darren over the past couple of years. It's awesome to have him here as an early guest on uh, Inflection Points. And with that, we're going to get, um, we're going to get rolling. Darren, anything you would add to that, to that opening? No, you know, I think that the, the last two years has been so inspiring to, to be um, somewhat of uh, connected to Flex Networks and the com combination of progress you and Brian and the team have made. It's a true example of boldness in, uh, in a time frame where everyone was held back by the obvious the last couple of years. But in terms of uh, dis disrupting, disrupting with a phenomenal model, my hat's off to you and your team. So thanks for letting me be a part of this. Too kind, too kind. Um, so, so the point, Darren, look, you, uh, again, as a podcaster, you, you occupy a particular space in the podcast uh, universe. Uh, we're trying to apply a space that focuses on inflection points, you know, more commonly thought of or referred to these days as those pivotal uh, moments, those piv pivotal phases. Sometimes it could be years. Sometimes they could be seconds. Sometimes they can be years. But in, in hindsight, you know them when you when you when you see them in real time. You don't always recognize them. Uh, we're going to focus on those inflection points, uh, mostly those positive trajectory changes. I'm open if there's some negative trajectory changes that you want to talk about and, and we can learn from. Let's 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 rewind though. Let's rewind the time machine here. Go go way back. Like what were some of your uh, formative inflection points that stand out? If you were to think back to friends, family, schooling, uh, I know you, you I, I think high school in San Francisco, college right. in New Hampshire, like right. that seems to me like sort of an inflection point. You want to yeah. talk us through that? Sure, absolutely, Mark. And thanks for asking. And I, I agree. We're all uh, defined by moments in life. And uh, we define and we grow and we learn. And I would uh, share with you, it started being an only child from a blue collar household um, and uh, in a blue collar household that uh, was fortunate enough to take their last pennies every month and send me to a private high school in San Francisco. Wow. And um, it was a phenomenal experience because it made me get involved with the best academics and best athletes in San Francisco uh, based around me. And so I had no choice but to try to find ways to excel. Awesome. Um, I came from a household that basically came from a root of let's do the right thing all the time and do the right thing all the time mean uh, put in the hard work. Uh, don't don't make excuses and uh, and sure we, we fumbled along the way per se using that analogy, but I learned with the right way and I was blessed by my mother and father's love in a blue collar household putting up every cent to make sure that I had opportunities to grow. Um, with that being said, I was the only child fortunate enough to go to college in my entire family, uh, cousins and everything. 
uh, across the board. And uh, I had the privilege of being recruited to back East to go to Dartmouth college to play, uh, to play ball there. And that was just a huge uh, light of my life. And so I would share with you, uh, I had a high school football coach uh, who was, uh, who was also uh, later on went not and he was a Super Bowl coach for Green Bay Packers. And I played underneath him in high school. And basically he told me in high school, he said, listen, it's going to be challenging for you coming from where you're from, but um, uh, don't ever be afraid to be vulnerable with me or indoor your team because everyone needs a place to, to talk out and talk out things and I'll be here for you, but don't, and, and, uh, but don't be surprised if I tell you to get back on the field and work harder. And then never, that, that rang a bell with me and his name is coach Gil Haskell. And he's uh, is a phenomenal man. He's still alive. He's 75 years old. And again, he was part of the Super Bowl championship of Green Bay Packers. He went on to do that, but he was a formidable person in my life during high school that really elevated me to the college and collegiate way of thinking. So when I got to Dartmouth, it was just like, oh my gosh, putting myself in a, in a pool of tremendously smart people. And uh, I found myself in the rear of the bus per se. And I found there's only one way to get to the front of the bus and that's with good energy and good work. Uh, in fact, those of you who are listening right now, there's a great book out there called, it's always been out there for a couple of decades, almost 15 years called Energy Bus by John Gordon. And it's a phenomenal book, short read, but boy, is it did share with you what this is all about. And um, so clearly that was an effort in hand and uh, made my way through academics, uh, playing ball, the whole thing. I did meet one uh, a brother, fraternity brother of mine who really changed my life in terms of the way of thinking. Uh, relative to the big strategies and big big ways of challenges in life. And his name was Jeff Kemp. You may know of his dad, Jack Kemp, who was a politician. Uh, Jeff was our quarterback. And Jeff, uh, uh, he said when his father was, uh, so I'm very close to Jeff. And uh, when his father was passing away later on in life, but importantly, he said, you know, life is for transformation. He always said, his dad always said that to him. And Jeff, as you know, went on to NFL and played NFL college ball was very successful and I've always stayed close to him. But I never forgot him saying in senior year, we were together uh, and he says, I don't know if I go for the draft or not. And he says, uh, I said, well, you know, you just, you got all this thing in front of you, let's go for it. And he says, yep, it's all about life is for transformation. I'm going for it. And so that stuck with me. Life is for transformation. It's just all thing about changes and how we handle them as individuals. And the, the one thing he did say is uh, surround yourself with good people along the way. His dad always told himself, told him that. Surround yourself with good people along the way, and uh, you will learn from them. And I, you know and I know, Mark, that is so true. Uh, we become who we hang around with. We become what we think. So those were formidable times up to my professional career. Hopefully, they kind of give you a little summary where, where it all started. I feel like we should wrap right there. We're on question <laughs> one of five, Darren, in my mind. <laughs> That's amazing. For real. You know Thank that. You. Thank you. It's, well, it's, I've been, I, you know, in, in, in the middle of it, you say, why me? But then you say, you know, after you get through it with good people around you and the lessons you were taught um, and uh, minimal liability experiences of, of the other side, uh, you get through it. And you, then you then I was just empowered to continue on with that same ethic. And I think that's what happens. We develop a good ethics that you believe in and you just continue on. And that carried me into the professional world at a very young, very young age. So I told you before we hit record that we were probably going to wind up having you back uh, as a guest. That's confirmed now because I think there's five or six different episodes that we could draw uh, from from your opening comments. I just picked up, you know, in terms of people, influences, parents, coach, friends, yeah. like, and then you had you had high school experience, college experience. Uh, family experience, like all of those different kind of vectors coming in to, to, to shape you into a, a formative, uh, in, in the formative stages of your life. Let's go, let's keep going though, Darren. Um, so let me think about this. At some point, ah, I know, at some point you go from the, you go from the bucolic uh, setting of Dartmouth in New Hampshire, right? Yeah. Do I think first professional experience as a, uh, and I think you, you described as a stockbroker. Exactly. That was the names yeah. back then. I had that. I had the same exact experience. I don't, I don't know if you know that, but from, yeah. from college in the rolling Hills of Pennsylvania to stockbroker with <laughs> Dun and Bradstreet index <laughs> cards 
on Madison Avenue in, in Manhattan. It was, it was, uh, it was a sea change. It was an inflection point. Talk to me though about your experience. Well, the, the, the short of the long is uh, when, when I got settled in and learned how to cold call with municipal bonds and PG&E stock with dividends, uh, utility stocks all day long. I I'm laughing that. with, not at you. Uh, <laughs> so just, uh, um, it was a wonderful experience to really understand the, the, the art of selling. And I didn't understand it at two years, but I got, got acquainted with it real quickly. And um, so that was two years of that. And then quickly moved into wholesaling and the asset management side. Uh, with Payne Weber, remember that name back then, that's now Absolutely. PBS. So it became my wholesaling experience started in 1983. Um, and so uh, wholesaling, uh, limited partnerships, oil and gas in the mid eighties and throughout the eighties where there's five tax reforms and a lot of changes and learned a lot about uh, being a young wholesaler at the age of 23, going out through seven states, Payne Weber representing these, you know, high level limited partnerships. And uh, so learned a lot back then. And then the short of the long is in terms of that experience, I tell you a pivotal point. So when I had the privilege of being promoted, asked to go back to New York and be a national sales manager for Mitchell Hutchins, which was the institutional arm of Payne Weber back then. I'm at the age of 33 and I get asked to this, this big leap in life. And, the, and um, so I, we went for it. And um, so my boss sat me down in, in one of the corner offices at 1285 Avenue of Americas. And I was just as all about it, right? And he sat me down in, uh, in a big corner office with a desk and he said, here's your business plan. And it was a blank yellow pad, Mark, a blank yellow pad. I mean, I'm the nervous, I'm more, more nervous than anything at the age of 33, taking this national sales job for an institutional arm of, of, of Payne Weber. And I said, what do you mean a blank, blank pad? He says, yeah, it's your canvas, yours to build. And you got to start with the obvious. And I said, what's the obvious? He goes, you got to call all of our clients and ask them what they want us to do better. You have to make sure that you create your own marketing, your own operations, your own team. And by the way, if you need to go to the restroom, don't stop by and ask me where it is. The reason is, he says, if you know it, if you already know it, don't ask me about it, don't bug me. But if you really need something, let me know. That was an eye-opening experience. He basically left after 20 minutes and he said, fill it out, I expect it in two days, come on back to me and let's go over it. But that was, a, he's like, he left this to me to do. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely a time where this, I said, this institution trusts me to get this done. I better perform. What his, made him trust you though, Darren? What, may, what do you think, thinking back on it, what was it that led to that position of trust? Yeah, prior to that, it was 10 years or almost 10 years with them both in the West Coast representing their products uh, on the West Coast. And I had right. a lot of opportunities to leverage great relationships. And I, I think that they found that I was uh, fully dedicated, number one. Uh, I, I try to do the right thing all the time. I was thorough. I had a great reputation, thankfully, of my clients and who believed that I was there to educate them and help them grow their business versus just sell them a product. Um, they, needed, they needed new energy in, the, in, the, in that building a little bit on that space. So they wanted, a, fortunately, a young person with new energy from the West who wasn't associated with the kind of the cobweb way of thinking at times, which can develop over time. And so I didn't know all that coming in. I knew it after he sat me down and said, this is the reason you're here. He kind of reframed that. And I said, OK, what do we go now? He says, here's your business plan. And then we went on with that, with that blank yellow pad, which scared the heck out of me. Amazing. Talking about that. But in reference as an analogy, isn't life like that? You get a blank pad every day. And you are able to then carve it out the way you want, if you choose, that do the right thing for your, your family, your professional skill set, et cetera. That was, that was a pivotal moment of setting the stage for me going in the, in the professional world at that high level. So, so how did you take the, the, the yellow pad? Let's, let's go down this one a little further. Sure. Right? I've been there as well, yeah. Yeah. right? You built a how, business. <laughs> how do you go from yellow pad in an office, Avenue in the Americas? Like, uh, by the way, and I was at 1345 Avenue in the Americas. So I feel, I feel like we've been trailing each other for. We for, walked across each other's past in front of Radio City a few times. Yeah, no, no doubt. <laughs> um, so yellow pad, uh, you've been entrusted. You've been given a yellow pad. You've come up with a plan. How do you bring it to life? Yeah, well, we got to surround ourselves with people that really believe in your same mission. And uh, so 
I think what happened is, is that my, my, as you know, Mark, my energy is very passionate and high. And it's always been that way. I've been that way in everything I do. And I think that I had, a, you know, looking back, I was lucky to be a little bit contagious. I think they saw that this, uh, this gentleman came in from the West. He's excited about building a new business arm called, guess what? It's called separate accounts for institutionally paying Weber, right? And, uh, and so he's, they, I think it was contagious in the sense that I'm flying around excited about building something. And uh, I had people who were saying, hey, what, what's going on? Let me know what's happening here. This is exciting. What's interesting to you? So my message of uh, interest, my message of education, of build out, of this is something brand new, this is exciting, I think attracted, uh, fortunately attracted the right kind of people around me. And so uh, then I had to build a sales team of 10 people nationally, which was just a blast because uh, building the right people to represent your firm that you are putting on the map or this arm of the firm you're putting on the map. Uh, I taught, learned a lot about, and um, also I brought in a lot of people who were smarter than me and let them all educate us. You know, I wasn't at all, I, I was definitely open-minded because I didn't know it all at the time. So I just, I was never afraid of bringing, I, I, always, I always taught, you know, my coach always said back in high school, surround yourself, as I mentioned, with great people and great things will happen. And so that I never lost that. So I surrounded myself with as many smart people I could in that atmosphere and let them help me build this. And so that was a, that was a very learning, great moment of, of that, that reality. That makes, uh, that makes complete sense. And look, I'm picking up on some, some themes and threads, both, both in, in, in famous and kind of routine ways. It sounds like you've had great people in your life that have catalyzed the, the inflection points in, in your career, you know? Parents, coach, again, Jeff Kemp. Yeah. Exactly. Head, head of sales, right? Some people. And look, it's not to say that it's just those outside forces. They they recognized the energy, the spirit that you that you have to capitalize on on kind of opportunities that they're they're creating. And then it's you creating the the positive inflection point. That's my that's my take on it. That's a good take. And uh, it wasn't, you know, I think it's just by default, I created a positive inflection point on it because it, it, all the way to things that kind of came together. And uh, it wasn't easy. I mean, when you're building something, it's not easy. But when you're excited, the easiness becomes more frequent yeah. when you're excited, as opposed to being down about building something and tired about it. And so uh, for some reason, I, I just kept on banging through that. And it was great. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, awesome. So let's let's go again. Trying to create the right tempo here and, and level of depth. Why don't we go ahead though, Darren? Because you've done after having so much corporate success, right? You you decide to to go out on your own. You 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 create. Um, you create DCB strategies, which in many ways is a firm, is a role, it's an adventure, all, all, all wrapped into one. Right. What I think I'm most curious in and what our listeners would like to hear most about is like, what was the, the specific inflection point that gave you the, the, the courage, the confidence to, to do it, to press go? Yeah, um, and that's a great question. It's uh, uh, the, the strength of that moment was in terms of deciding to press go to move out of my routine of 38 years at the time of representing and selling at different levels was a um, one that was comfortably uncomfortable. It was time. You wake up in the morning, you know that the growth of my of my my personal self was being a little bit stagnated only because I love what I was doing so much, but I was looking for more. And I didn't say that the industry, I mean, the industry, as you know, hands us so many great elements of life and growth opportunities. And so, but I felt as I was at a startup firm, it was my third, it was a second year of a three-year startup firm. And I was charged of building up the West for them and it worked out really well. And uh, they had uh, a different position on their future. And I said, you know what? I think this may be the time, right? I say, you know what? Maybe I should rewire versus retire. And that was the way to do that. And so I looked at it in hindsight and I said, well, I don't want to leave this industry. 
And so, because I've learned so much from it and I've taken so much from it and I've, I've, I've met so many great people, how can I give back and still be in, involved in it in, in an energetic spiritual, in a very, you know, high spirit way that allows me to uh, give something back that I've learned. So short of the long is, is that Mark, as you know, when you go through the hallways of Wall Street's uh, offices and uh, RIAs and wirehouses over the years, uh, what I what I witnessed was a tremendous amount of uh, high producing performers um, that had manuals, CD booklets that had all the coaching elements next to them. And I knew that coaching and motivation was key in our business because I've been a, I've been a part of it, too. But I saw those manuals collecting dust and I saw some of the CD packets kind of sit there in a the corner. They never use them again of motivational type things. And I remembered this. And then I also remember that I had the privilege of being around the best teams, uh, you know, in terms of visiting the best teams uh, along the way, uh, knowing best athletes in the country, CEOs, leadership teams, just had the privilege of meeting all these best people at what they do. So I'm putting two and two together, or three and three together, or multiple things together. And I'm saying, you know what, there's, what I see out there in the advisor world is this content is sitting on the bookshelves. They were exposed to it for two weeks at a seminar. They got excited and it was content about how to go from A to Z, a linear process. Then I, you know, and then I thought about, well, what do the best do out there? The best know the content. They got that. In fact, some of them don't know the content, but what the best do have an insatiable mindset and they have an insatiable brain about how they talk to themselves, how they do things, the way they surround themselves. And, they, and it just carries through with what the best do, whether athletic world or professional world. And I say, there's a difference here. What I see in the old traditional consulting world is the content. And what I don't see out there is, the, is, is I call it the rewiring spot. Because what's, on the, what's above our shoulders is for free. It's a three pound brain that's phenomenal. And, and I think that and I, what I witnessed is that, as you know, the, the saying of DCB strategies is that the best and average have nothing in common. And I witnessed this and I said, well, let's build, let's build a curriculum around rewiring the brain and the heart to get to where people want to go. Because the hardest thing for people to do is, is not make a decision, I want to have a bold goal. But the hardest thing for them to do is change their habits to get there. And that's the key. And that comes from no your doubt. brain and the way you retrain yourself and the heart of purpose to get it there. So I, I talked to a few of my counterparts out there who I believe in in terms of mentors. And I said, what do you think about this rewiring process with DCB strategies? And talked about what we're doing. And, and that's where I came up. You know, DCB doesn't stand for Darren Sidibaka. It stands for decide, commit, become. And so I talked that out with some of my colleagues and friends out there and and the decide commit become really rang a bell you know people can decide to do something very easily but there's a lot in there so I wanted to help them with that what does that mean and then people say why well, they can commit to something and I think you and I both know that's one of the most loosely used words in our business or any business out there I'm committed but what does that really mean so I wanted to help rewire that and if you decide on a bowl you commit properly you'll become that vision you want so it all fit kind of like that. And I said, let's do this. This is, this is, there's no one doing this out there in terms of rewiring, because it all, all it takes is, as you know, if you find, if you surround yourself with an excited athlete, an excited CEO, excited leadership team, excited salesperson, there's no, there's no obstacles. They're just fired up. They're going. That's the trigger that I build on is get that in there, in there, in our brains together as an accountable coach. And that's the last thing I'll, I'll talk about is accountability is key. Whether you're Tiger Woods, Kobe Bryant, whether, whether you're a corporate, et cetera, they all had a coach that they, they had to be accountable to, to get a cadence of progress, cadence of new habits. And that's fabulous at any age in our life for the good. And so I am the accountable coach. I'm not the person that says you should do it this way. I'm the person to say, why didn't you do it? That's all I'm doing. Why did this your choice? Let's do this. If it matters, it'll happen. So that's a key phrase. If it matters, it will happen. And a lot of people feel as though it doesn't matter at times. And so therefore they lose why it doesn't happen. So anyways, that's a little bit of a little more than you wanted. But there's not. It's exactly what we wanted. And when I when I play it, when I listen first, play it back second, Darren, what, what I hear is um you're helping people 
rewire and you're helping with what I think of as a meta skill, right? A skill that helps all other skills. And that's getting comfortable being uncomfortable. That's probably the most, I, personally, I think that might be the most valuable life skill, certainly professional skill uh, you, you could have. And then you're getting them to commit to getting comfortable being uncomfortable. If you can do that, bring the energy that you personally have you've created a powerful force. Well, it, it's, you know what, I, thank you for saying that. And, I, and one of the questions, you know, one of the things you, you we always ask each other, what inspires you? I yeah. get inspired by working with these, with, with these wonderful clients. Mm. And there's 14, 15 different mandates that I'll have that I work with. But when I see them actually commit to new habits to get new results because they're excited about this and they're freshened up, it carries on to their personal life too. And it's just so inspiring to see this happen. And so that's why I, and at the end of the day is I give them a toolbox and that toolbox is something, as you know, life distractions keep, keep us off, you know, sometimes bring us off of our, 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 our direction. And this toolbox is basically then go back to and remind themselves of the things that they are missing or can get back into to get back on that, you know, that direction of rewiring and getting things done. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, let's, let's bring this to a close for today, at least sure. before we do that, I, I want to give you the opportunity to, you, you did it a bit there, but thinking ahead, what are your ongoing sources of inspiration, motivation, uh, in the professional sphere or outside? Again, I, I know that you do a lot of work, uh, in the foundation space, this would be an opportunity if, sure. if that's, I think that's a source of inspiration and motivation. The, the floor is yours, though, to, to expand for the audience. Well, um, yeah, short of the long is uh, you mentioned, you're kind enough to mention uh, that we, my wife and I and my younger son started a nonprofit almost eight and a half years ago called One Hit Away Foundation. And it's the only nonprofit in the country that, uh, that uh, is involved with healing sports related concussions. And um, so that's a very inspiring when you take. Basically, the format that we have is uh, non-systematic because the system doesn't really hasn't proven to heal soft tissue and the neurons of brains. Therefore, we see these tragedies occur. And the process that we have come into with deep science and proven science and then sharing with uh, brain healing specialists around the, around the country that are very unique, sharing them with our over 400 people have gone through our program. Uh, it's very inspired when someone says to you, you know what, you saved my life. And uh, that's my wife and uh, her team's effort. And we hear that and I see that, I recognize it. And so when I see, her, when I see myself involved with um, saving lives and changing lives, oh man, my, I, get, I, get, you know, I get shivers down my back. And it's, it's just incredible when we have the platform to give that way. Number one, I'm very grateful and uh, full of gratitude. Number two, uh, we educate the heck out of ourselves. We, we really make sure we're, we're, we're filled with the right knowledge so we don't get anybody in the wrong direction. We don't know it all, but we certainly surround ourselves with good people who help us all the time. So that's full of motivation there, surrounding ourselves with people who are on a new journey. Let's never get tired of seeing people regenerate themselves physically or mentally to go and do something better for themselves. It's so incredible. You see it with your own children as they develop over time etc. Um, I read a lot in terms of different individuals of motivation. I think motivation, there's two ways to motivate people. And that's mental income, which is about reading and education, and obviously monetarily. Uh, so those are two ways, simple ways, but people forget about the mental income side. We don't learn enough about so many great simple things that we can excel at. No doubt. I'm, a, I'm a huge podcaster in terms of listening to a couple podcasts. One of my favorites is a gentleman named Richard Nichols out of the UK. Uh, Richard Nichols is, uh, have great snippets on uh, very simple things of psychology and the way the brain works out of the UK. Um, obviously, I listen to some, a lot of that, and I'm learning along the way, too. So, again, inspired by changing lives, changing trajectories of professional careers, per personal uh, growth patterns. Um, and also my two young men who uh, are my children, 31 and 29. Uh, just gifted by their progress in the community that they're in and what they're doing for their professional careers and their wives and our grandchildren. Uh, we're blessed and I don't take any of that for granted. So uh, thank you for asking. That is uh, sufficiently inspirational. Thank you. Like uh, 
you're an inspiring person. You've got diverse interests and pursuits. You've been uh, successful in, in multiple dimensions of life, uh, including family dimension. And that's, that's, uh, it's amazing. Thank so you, thank you, Darren, for being, uh, being our guest today. I want to, uh, I want to say thank you also to our listeners. Your time is valuable, as the saying goes. You've allowed Darren and I to occupy uh, some of your time and potentially enhance some of your 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 mind space. All of that is, is valuable, uh, is is valuable to you, valuable to us. Uh, our podcast, we're not we're not afraid to say is is, a, is like people. We're, we're all a work in progress. Uh, if you picked up anything of interest, uh, please subscribe, leave a leave a rating, a review. And until next time, uh, keep looking for and creating your own inflection points. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mark. Have a good day. You too, Darren. The information contained in this recording is provided as is for educational and informational purposes only and should not serve as the basis for any trading or investing decisions. Flex Networks makes no representations and disclaims all express, implied, and statutory warranties of any kind to any viewer, listener, or other third party. Neither Flex Networks nor any of its affiliates make any endorsement of any particular company, security, product, or financial strategy, and nothing contained in this recording should be construed as investment advice. Investors should undertake their own due diligence and carefully evaluate companies.